In addition to threats from Russia, the U.S. is also trying to maintain the safety of one of the most vital shipping lanes in the world, the Red Sea, which is now under constant threat by Iranian-backed Houthi rebels. Our Natasha Bertrand gained unique access to a U.S. aircraft carrier strike group. Its sailors and pilots who are under constant threat from possible drone and missile attacks. Take a look. All stations air, new track, 80306, ISS's anti-ship cruise missile inbound gravely. This is what the crew of a U.S. warship hears when a Houthi missile is headed their way. MSSI, missiles away, 80306. CNN embedded with the U.S. Navy. Right standard runner, steady on course. In the Southern Red Sea. <laughs> where sailors have been on the front lines of the fight against the Iran-backed rebels for over two months. We're on our way now to the USS Gravely, which is one of the destroyers. Here off the coast of Yemen, U.S. warships try to shoot down the Houthi missiles before they can cause any real damage. But the sailors have little time to respond. We could have seconds or we could have minutes. Based on, I wouldn't say much more than minutes. The USS Dwight D. Eisenhower aircraft carrier, which the president ordered to the Red Sea in November in response to the Houthi attacks, has been working at a frenetic pace to keep up with the threat. They have tried to target coalition forces, uh, U.S. forces. Uh, through swarm attacks, using multiple UAVs, using multiple anti-ship ballistic missiles and anti-ship cruise missiles. Uh, they are trying everything that they can, but we are prepared for anything that they might throw away. Fighter jets are launched from the Ike roughly 50 times per day, staying airborne for hours at a time so they can quickly strike targets inside Yemen and over the Red Sea. We were woken up early this morning around 4.30 a.m. to the sounds of alarms blaring on this aircraft carrier, a sign, we are told, of a potential imminent threat by a Houthi drone that was flying over the Red Sea. That alarm indicating that these fighter aircraft behind me, they had to be ready to respond, potentially at a moment's notice. That drone was quickly deemed no longer a threat, but it demonstrates how risky the mission is. The Houthis have also been trying to hit the jets flying over Yemen with surface-to-air missiles, officials told CNN. You're flying these missions against the Houthis. Can you talk a little bit about what is unique or the most challenging aspect of these missions that you're doing on a near daily basis? Well, you know, first off, this isn't exactly where we expected to be on this deployment. Whenever you're doing something for the first time, um, in a region, you know, that's that's not without risk, but we have managed that risk to our strike group and our air crew through the management of combat power. With no end in sight to the Houthi attacks, U.S. officials tell CNN they don't know how much capability the rebels have left as they continue to be resupplied by Iran. 503 is uh, electronic attack. The commander of the carrier strike group told CNN they will stay in the Red Sea for as long as necessary. The sustainability, we can go for a long time. Uh, we've got our uh, logistics train already mapped out uh, to stay here as long as the president needs us to stay here. Now, Anderson, one of the big questions that we came away from this uh, experience with is how much of the Houthis' capabilities has the U.S. actually been able to destroy with their repeated strikes inside Yemen? These strikes are a near daily occurrence now, and officials on board these ships didn't have a great answer for us. They don't have a good sense of just how much weaponry the Houthis still have stockpiled, and that is going to be a really key question when it comes to just how much longer the U.S. is going to have to actually sustain this campaign in the Red Sea keep those sailors and those pilots in the Red Sea, keep them deployed where they've already been deployed with really no break uh, for the last four months there, Anderson. Uh, Natasha, thanks so much.